Hey guys, welcome to my channel. <laughs> channel? Channel. It's channel. It's, it's channel. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Crystal O. And today I'm going to be doing a Q&A on questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. So, first of all, if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And let's get this Q&A started. So you guys asked some really good questions. Let's go ahead and jump into the first question. So this question says, how can you be single and content? Honestly, I believe that in some form, shape, and way, um, we believe that marriage or being with a partner or having a significant other is like the apex of like wholeness, you know? I don't know where that belief came from or maybe it's just like societal, you know, beliefs of, you know, finding the one or be being whole because someone else is your other half. But the truth is that even like in marriage, even with a partner, discontentment still has room to thrive if it doesn't come down to a individual personal level of you know what like with or without another person i'm going to be content with my portion and really i feel like it all just stems from the idea of being content with the portion that god has given you so reminding yourself of what you do have and then also reminding yourself that man if the lord wills it if it's in his plan for your life he's gonna send you that person like he will send you that person and you won't have to worry about fighting for it or making it happen or taking control of it and i think that um, contentment really is going to reside in the area of trusting in God, right? We're going to be content when we believe that what God has given us in this season is enough for what he has called us to do. So I think really at the deep root of it, it's going to be a trust um, resolve, really, when it comes to trusting God that where you are right now, whatever your relationship status is, that that is where he wants you to be and that is what he wants for your life in this season or however long it's like that right so i think right now it's kind of like the scripture that says that we should be faithful with what we have so that we can be given more and the goal is not always to get more but the goal is just to be faithful with what god has given us if you were in school and you were single be faithful with your academics read your books pass those classes as unto the lord serve others get involved and just be content with where you are because truth be told even when you get married there's still going to be an area of discontent in your life if you're not fully surrendering that part of your life to god and just saying lord have your way and honestly and truly i'm going to trust that the portion you've given me is enough and that you've given me all i need right now so um i know it's not easy i'm not trying to give you this cookie cutter Christian answer it's definitely um, something that I wrestle through but I think at the end of my journey I realized that honestly I just want the Lord's portion and whatever he's given me in this season I'm going to maximize to the fullest and not let it go to waste that's how I would answer that question so let me go ahead and go to the other question so the other question says what do you believe your spiritual gifts are so Honestly, I feel like from what others have told me, I think teaching is one of my spiritual gifts. I think that um, I just get really, really excited and passionate about sharing and teaching people about um, the Lord and just like his goodness and scripture and all stuff like that. So I think teaching is definitely one. I think recently a gift that I feel like I'm tapping into that I don't think I like have have, but a gift that I think that I'm tapping into is more so like prophetic, like prophecy. So really just hearing from the Lord and those like actual words being real for other people so for example the lord will give me a picture or a phrase or just words to speak over someone else and like when i speak them over that person or when i tell them like hey this is what the lord has like submitted to me i want to submit that to you does it land does it not land and they're like oh my gosh that is exactly what i'm needing so i feel like the lord has been so gracious to have given me of all people some tap into the prophetic because that was such a disbeliever and a doubter in the prophetics because I love a lot of past hurt with prophetics but um, prophetics for sure I think is a gift that I'm tapping into that I feel the Lord is 
graciously giving me more of and allowing me to hear from him. And I think that we all have, you know, the ability to actually hear God and, you know, submit things to people that the Lord might be saying to us. I think that's, that's basically all when it comes to my gifts. What gifts do you think I have? And if you have any spiritual gifts that you know you have, share them below. All right, so this one says, how did you prepare for international travel? Is it really expensive? So yes and no in terms of is it really expensive? So I have traveled internationally since I was like 11 years old because like I said, I went to school in Nigeria and I did a lot of traveling with my mom and my parents. So um, it's expensive. But if you get your tickets on time, if you do a lot of research beforehand, there are waves, right? Some good apps that I would say you can use are apps like Hopper, um, Skyscanner. Um, there's another app called Universe. Um, it's something about like basically, let me look it up. Basically, if you're in school, if you're a student, there's this really, really cool website that you get discounted tickets on and it's called Student Universe. So that's basically where I got my tickets for um, me and my husband to travel to London for our one year anniversary. And our tickets were super cheap. They were like, I think like 400 or 300. It was just super cheap. So um, Student Universe is a good resource in terms of trying to travel for cheap if you are a student or if you are a teacher or administrator at a university or a school. I think it's just colleges. Um, save, save, save. Um, there are different apps that you can use to save money on. Um, I'm looking at my phone because I'm gonna look up the apps for you. Um, I do have a savings account in my bank account, but another app is called Digit. Um, I will leave the link to Digit in my description bar below with my like personalized code so you can sign up through there if you want to. I actually have a travel account um, dedicated specifically to putting money into the travel account so that I don't like spend it. <laughs> so what I like about Digit is that it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. So it's just slowly drawing um, small, small, small charges from your checkings account and putting it away into your travel account. So that's pretty awesome. So basically that's all I would really say for travel. Research about where you're going. Um, read up a lot. Um, shout out to my husband. He had to read a lot about London and just Europe in general for us to like maneuver and get around. He actually wrote a blog post about that. So shameless plug, check it out. So it's kind of a mouthful, but I will leave as much as I can in my description bar below. And if you have any questions, just feel free to comment below with them. All right, so this one says, how do you try to glorify God through your job? So actually, if you guys don't know, I work for a Christian nonprofit counseling agency and um, we pray during team meeting. Um, we are very just kind of like faith. We're faith people of faith. So um, I'm kind of surrounded by that daily, but I glorify God with my job and being diligent with it and being honest with it, being trustworthy, being a good worker, not like slacking off or just like mm, whatever, being measly with it because you want to do everything as under the Lord. So I think another umbrella over like glorifying God with my job is that um, as I'm driving to work, I literally am either blasting worship music or I'm like praying over my clients for that day and just praying for breakthrough and healing um, and just whatever change they're wanting to see in their lives. So I guess that's where I glorify God with my job and just submitting it to him and allowing him to take full reign in um, what he would want. So the next question is, what are your thoughts on online dating as a young Christian woman or is patience the key? So this one's a little tough. I think that all I can say is that with online dating, like I don't have any like reference or backup or anything to like kind of go off of, but um, I would say with online dating, just be careful. I hear like crazy stories and it's just like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So technically my husband and I did meet online, even though it wasn't like a dating app, we met on Twitter and I have a video talking all about that. So feel free to check it out. But um, we have mutual friends, so I kind of knew of him, didn't know him personally. I'd never met him before, but that's kind of was the, I guess, connection piece to him that I knew people who knew him. And I think that that's important when it comes to getting to know someone because if you don't know anyone that knows them and you can't get another side of the story or you can't ask about them or you can't like just do your research, right? Like low key stalking, but you know, you can't do your research well if you know no one or nothing about them. But I think that it's really important that you're very careful, that you use wisdom and discernment and you just pray about it. Like Lord, 
Is this what I should be doing? Should I? Should I be more patient? And I mean, some people just don't have access to maybe, you know, I don't know, like an environment where young adults are, or maybe they live in an area that's very secluded, or they work all the time, or they never have time to go out and actually meet new people or mingle or whatever. So I do understand that too, but I would just say be careful. Um, I don't see where it would be like a sin or anything or like something that's bad or wrong but yeah that's just my take on it there might be some other you know theory about it but that's just my take on it so yeah all right so this one says msw student here i'm curious to know how or why you chose to go into social work so hey girl msw student here too so i actually switched my major from pre-med to psychology my junior year of college and then I graduated with a psych degree. So after I got my bachelor's in psychology, I was actually looking to get my master's in counseling or my master's in psychology or just whatever that would look like for you know the psychology path. But I really wanted to go to a faith-based school. Most of the faith-based schools or schools in general require the GRE and I plummeted my GRE. I did so bad. I actually wrote a blog post about it just encouraging people. <laughs> but I did so bad on it so I was like, yeah, Standardized tests are not for me, so definitely was like, okay, Lord, what are my other options? And that's where social work came up. And I was actually like, oh my gosh, like that so aligns with like what I want to do regardless. And that's what made me take the leap. I didn't really know anything about social work at all. I literally found out that it was an actual major and that you could get a master's in it after I graduated from college. So um, yeah, I'm here now. I'm a licensed master social worker and I'm currently receiving supervision for my licensed clinical social work license. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the next one. So this one says, what is it like being a therapist? So honestly, I feel like it just depends on what setting you're in. I work with children and families and um, I would say that it's an extremely rewarding field. I would start by saying that. I love when I just get to celebrate just wins with my clients and just get to celebrate growth and just the achievement. Like it literally makes my heart so happy. It makes my job so rewarding and it, I just come home like, babe, I had a win day. Like I just feel like I hit the lottery. Like that's basically what it feels like. But of course there are those moments where it's just like, man, like, individuals and humans are just so complex and you can't control them you can't fix them right so there's a lot of patience a lot of listening a lot of affirming a lot of encouraging a lot of reflecting um their thoughts back to them and yeah i just think it's an extremely rewarding career or just job right now right now for me um but yeah i guess that's all i would really say uh, i think there's a lot of paperwork involved of course but um, nonetheless, I really like it. Um, it's such an honor and a privilege just to like walk hard paths with people and to, to be brought into that, like, right? To be trusted enough to be brought into the hard paths that people walk daily. So it's such an honor. It's literally like treasure to me. Um, so I'm super grateful for the opportunity. All right, so this one says, tips on being constant and creating content. I'm a therapist by day and I am tired. <laughs> Girl, I hear you 100%. That's why you haven't seen me in a minute, okay? So for me, honestly, I have to put it on my schedule. If it's going to happen, it has to go on my schedule. So that's why as of now, I'm trying to make one day out of the week dedicated specifically towards creating content just so I can have my content time and then edit it. So I have videos available for my channel. So that's really what I'm doing. Um, that's what I feel will help me get more structured because if I literally just go without creating content and just like hope it'll just, you know, this, the urge in me will just pop up, it's gonna be quite rare or quite slim to none that I'm actually gonna do it because I'm gonna find an excuse not to do it. And also I think for me the advantage that I have is that Every Friday, um, we work remotely, so we don't. I don't really go to work on Friday. Um, so we work remotely doing documentation for half the day, which gives me the rest of the day to do volunteer work and also create content. So that's basically how and why it would kind of work for me. Ah, there's so many left. Okay, so this one says, how do you balance marriage and work? So honestly, it's really crazy because I feel like marriage and work, balancing that kind of was a little, easy it was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be 
So, um, I, like, I thought it was gonna be harder, but it was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, so really, I just balance marriage and work by not bringing it home, making sure that I'm processing all the information that I need to process at work, or processing a lot of my thoughts that I need to process at work, and I'm actually leaving that at work. I don't bring it home with me and dump it on my husband. Um, when I get home from work, I normally try to cook a meal. Um, I love to cook, so that's not really like a, a burden to me. Um, but that's basically how I feel I balance it and then on the weekends we usually like do something or we'll hang out or we'll spend time together but typically at the end of the day we do discuss our days in a more generalized manner I typically will ask my husband like how did your day go and he'll tell me and then I'll share mine with him and I just kind of give you know small nooks and crannies of how my day went but that's basically what we do we spend time together by watching a show um, or we'll just eat dinner together or we'll just cuddle or just whatever it would look like that kind of helps us bond but um, that's basically how I balance it I don't bring work home um, I do do documentation sometimes if we have free slots during the night or um, you know if he's busy working on his stuff or sermon prepping I'll just go ahead and start like doing my documentation for the night or whatever but other than that um, it hasn't been a problem and overall I think the balance has been pretty good so that's kind of where we are okay so I'm gonna go ahead and pick two more questions because y'all there are a lot of questions okay so this question is really good it says what is the hardest thing about being an influencer Whew, so the hardest thing about being an influencer to me is uh, feeling like you have to go with the flow of the culture or feeling like to be like where you want to be in like growth or the numbers or the likes or whatever that you have to like change or evolve yourself to like fit in with the crowd and i think that as a christian influencer that's just something that i can't do and probably won't ever want to do because that's not what i'm called to do right um i'm called to stand on what god wants of me and what um, I feel will help lead my subscribers um, in a way that ultimately leads them to Christ or ultimately leads them to the person of Jesus. So I think that that's the hardest part. The hardest part is not being discouraged by numbers or discouraged by who's watching or who's not watching or who's commenting or who's not commenting, right? So I think that just um, the focus is not allowing people to deter or determine um, what I'm doing or how much I'm doing, but instead allowing the Lord to kind of lead that. I think that there are definitely areas for insecurities to bleed in, areas of discouragement can like knock you down and just like <laughs> disappointment and all types of stuff, right? But um, yeah, I think that's basically what it's like being an influencer. I think that there are amazing parts about being an influencer, like you guys sharing with me how much my channel impacts you, getting to work with different companies, getting different sponsorships have been amazing, but there are of course pros and cons to all of it. So I think that um, with being an influencer, you just have to be careful not to get lost in the sauce of society, okay? You just have to truly stand and fight for what you believe in and be very vocal and honest about that. I'm gonna go ahead and pick one more question and this one says what was the biggest challenge transitioning from being single to married so I actually have a video up on this um, it's on my channel so I'm gonna go ahead and link it below and I'm gonna go ahead and pick another one I believe the video is called three things four things a certain number of things no one told me about marriage, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put it below um, so you can watch it. So this one says, did you feel impatient while waiting for a partner in university? This is my current situation. I think that I had seasons um, where I would be like lonely or impatient. And then I think I came to the end of myself where I was like, you know what? I don't even freaking care. Like, Lord, it is your plan. And um, of course I want to be married one day. I'm not gonna lie and say I didn't want to be married, but it was more so like, I just want to be married to the right person. Like I want to be married to the person that the Lord has for me, not just to be married to be married. So I think that's what held me and that's what kept me. And I think I was more focused on what God had put in front of me, like education and the future and serving him and learning about his word and growing in intimacy with the Lord first. Um, instead of actually like pursuing or you know desperately like wanting co male companionship because I was basically over it like I was over just wanting male companionship I wanted more than just that thank you guys so much for asking these amazing questions this video is long as of now I'll probably have to chop it up some and make it a little shorter 
But these are some really good questions. I really hope that I was able to answer them. I tried to answer them to the best of my ability. So I hope that they um, were communicated well and that you guys picked up something from this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment below with your thoughts and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!